Three down and two to go, at least in terms of India's white ball series against West Indies. I'm talking about the T20s, guys. Now, we have uh, Arshida, who's going to be joining us very shortly. So, before we get cracking with the show, subscribe. And there's plenty to go through in terms of the Cricket.com app. First and foremost, Sri, welcome back to Cricket.com. How are we this evening? Wonderful. Wonderful. India went 2-1 up uh, last night. So, uh, could have been better. Right, so first and foremost, what is your biggest takeaways from the three T20 internationals which has gone by us? The luggage reached on time, so at least <laughs> to start with. Well, I'm just kidding. So the thing is, to me, the biggest takeaways uh, looking at things uh, would be I think Ashdeep has bowled really well in all three games. Uh, why I'm saying it's a good takeaway because he's handled himself well under pressure, you know, uh, and he's backed himself with his uh, strengths. And he's, uh, he's, he showed some clarity of thought and maturity there. That's awesome. Ash being in the middle was, has been helpful for India. Hardik bowling four overs in every match is a huge, 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 huge bonus for India. For uh, for for the team to go into the World Cup with this kind of bowling form. Uh, Surya played well uh, last night. Shresh still a few issues. Rohit played very well in the first game and Dinesh Karthik, the way he finished uh, the Indian innings in the first innings of the first game was uh, stupendous. What is your take on all these experiments that Team India are doing right now? We spoke about Sky opening the batting, Avesh bowling the final over and in the grander scheme of things, India have a handful of T20s before the World Cup. But at what point do you think that they will start playing with their 11 which is going to be playing in the World Cup with properly assigned roles? I think the 11 which will play in the World Cup will only play in the first match of the World Cup. Okay. <laughs> she, will not, she will not see that 11 playing too many games together before the World Cup. Maybe the South Africa series. Maybe. Subject to everyone being fit, there is going to be some rotation in terms of keeping the players fresh for the travel and, and for the World Cup. But having said that, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, the, the players uh, who are going to miss out game, games are the experienced ones, right? They know how to fit themselves in straight away into a big match. So, well, let's not worry about them. So, what the Indian uh, think tank is trying to do here is give, give a lot of youngsters enough experiences, not just game time, but enough uh, pressure situations for them to uh, get used to it and for them to uh, perform. Now, in the first episode, we spoke about how Rishabh Pant opening the batting in T20 internationals is a watershed moment, at least you said that. But Rohit Sharma, for the last three T20 internationals, has gone with Suri Kumar Yadav. How have you viewed that move? Uh, uh, when Surya walked in, opened up with Rohit in the first uh, T20, I was, I was a bit surprised. I was a bit surprised with that move. Uh, immediately, I checked to see if Rishabh is playing the game. He was playing the game. So, obviously, there is something going on there which uh, we don't know yet. There is something happening inside the Indian team change room which we, do, which we are not aware about. Otherwise, I don't see this, this management uh, chopping and changing batting orders that easily. Because this management is known for backing their players, giving them ample of opportunities to, to uh, show off their skills and prove their mettle. So, I was quite surprised when Surya walked in. I don't, I don't know the reason why this change was made. I really don't know about it. Maybe Rishan did want to open. Or maybe India wanted to look at another opening option. Obviously, KL Rahul was supposed to go for this uh, series. But he could not go owing to, uh, you know, uh, COVID and then travelling and then getting used to the conditions would be taking a lot of time. So, he chose to stay. And really so. Uh, so, maybe it will stop, stop gap arrangement. I don't know why exactly the, there was, there's been a change, but like I said, I think there is something that we don't know. Just a little bit more on experiments then. A few from your era, can you cast your mind back and tell us what paid off eventually or what didn't? The team has changed so much. Uh, well, there was one there was one move made by Dhoni back in 2013 Champions Trophy to send Rohit Sharma open. So, that is still a part of this team. <laughs> so, again, one of the reasons for that move was uh, Dinesh Karthik was batting so well in the practice game for that, of that Champions Trophy, but uh, Rohit had to play. So, with the management then, mostly Captain Dhoni, he found a spot for Dhoni, for Rohit at the top of the order, and that that uh, 
that was a brilliant move um na any move which we may made in t20 obviously surya coming into the team last uh, couple of years ago against england um well is he sure how good he is shreyas is back at 3 which is where he should be if virat is not playing uh well that's some of it i, I don't and hardik bowling in games that's something which is very very important and uh, is doing it very successfully now so but these are the things which come to mind which which which, which is happening now which is start earlier but nothing in particular uh, which a uh, move which was strategically made and that is still continuing Right, you mentioned the man there in Dinesh Karthik. What I want to know is how he's fine-tuned his finishing role, and what has he done differently in this comeback of his. I mean, for starters, he hung in there for 15 years. So, a lot of credit to Dinesh Karthik for his perseverance, for his resilience, for his willpower, for his self-belief. Because uh, you know, I'm mean, debuting in 2007 and believing that he can still win the World Cup for India again. uh in uh, 2022 a lot of credit to him for his mindset i think it's an example for so many uh cricketers out there who feel that they, they will they may not get an opportunity again uh number 2 is obviously he is uh, up this game he's understood the clarity uh that comes along with batting at number 6 uh he knows that he's not going to be playing more than 20 balls or 14 balls every inning and he's worked his game towards that he's improved his power game about even about 2 or 3 years ago dinesh karthik was all about leg like side hitting so what happened then was a lot of teams started bowling wide and short or wide and full to him and that aspect of the game is something which is really improved worked on now you see him uh pummeling deliveries over long off for sixes flat batting short balls over extra cover for boundaries and sixes and he's also got the ability to hit any ball which is not stumps uh, over the square leg fence so he's improved his game a lot he's using the crease a lot more than what he used to before in terms of depth so that is something which he's worked on he's worked very hard with his coaches and also another thing which is helping him is i think that cozy dressing room uh those are words he used he he said that the dressing room is a cozy place he better not go to sleep there because he's got a job to do for india So uh, yeah, I think he likes he likes the comfort. He likes the the, the warmth. There is something to offer him with Rohit and Rahul. There he feels that he belongs there. So that's a great that's a great uh, thing for him. And uh, he's doing wonderfully wonderfully well for India, no doubt about it. The other thing which has popped up in the last three matches is the left arm chat again. This time over with McCoy, who are getting six for seventeen in that second T20 international. When you were with Team India, did you guys have specific plans to counter a left-arm pace? As opposed to the wickets taken by right-hand fast bowlers, I know I would like to dig a little deeper, dive a little deeper into the numbers before I make a comment. So yes, we get out to left-arm fast bowlers, but what is the percentage of wickets we've lost to left-arm fast bowlers over the last couple of years? Uh, as opposed to number of balls balls bowled by left-arm fast bowlers, number of wickets taken strike rate. the strike rate of a right arm uh, fast bowler and then only i would be jumping into any conclusions or i would be jumping into you know pressing the panic button as yes we are getting out to left arm fast bowlers so i think the credit there goes to with me or all even to play the in the in the previous series yes we we can work better with the angles left arm over the ball swings in and all odd ball holds its line is a challenge not only to uh, indian batters but it would be a challenge to any batter worldwide and any left hand angling it across makes it a little difficult to to hit the legs so these are the challenges any batting order will be facing but yeah to press the panic button i think i would be seeking more numbers in terms of strike rates of right arm fast bowlers and left arm fast bowlers lastly just to finish up this chat here shri we saw hudda replacing jadeja he's now been tried at two spots top of the order as a batter and now as an all rounder given hudda keeps performing where do you think he might fit in better and can india consider him over jadeja against left handed heavy teams uh generally they say that it is not crowded at the top but with the indian team batting order is crowded at the top you know i, I don't think deepak hooda is ready to uh book a spot at the top of the order yet yet i i'm using the word yet he's definitely a terrific talent but there's a lot of crowd there at the top of the order for 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 this indian team 
uh, whether you see to replace it Jadeja, well, not yet because the wealth of experience Jadeja brings in being a left-hander at number seven is a huge, huge advantage for India. Yes, Deepak Gura is a fearless stroke maker, so he would be a terrific number six, number number seven for India against the teams where you feel that uh, there are a lot of left-handers, like you mentioned. That could be an option for India. Otherwise, I think when it comes to a big tournament like a World Cup, if we are talking about a World Cup here, you need the experience, the calmness of someone like one in the sink. All right, let's see how it all transpires in the last two T20 internationals. You can catch all the coverage on cricket.com. Until then, have a good day and download the app. I'm Abhinik Shaikh. We'll see you soon. Until then, it's a goodbye.